I have a small book at home. It's not real big. And uh, actually, uh, uh, Billy and Lisa bought it for me many years ago as, as a gift. And uh, the book is entitled Adriisms. Adriisms. It is, it's a book of sayings, and man, I tell you, there's very few people that could say things the way Adrian Rogers said them. It's a book of things that he said down through the years that just stuck. And so they put a whole book together. And uh, I love this one. Supposedly someone came to him once and said, uh, Dr. Rogers, who is better, a man or a woman? Dr. Rogers said, yes. Now, he wasn't trying to avoid that, that. That's something like I would do. Who better, Dr. Rogers, a man or a woman? Yes. Yes. He went on. The man is superior to the woman at being a man. And the woman is superior to the man at being a woman. And that is extremely wise. I said this morning we were going to Entitled the message, Celebrate the Difference. We were going to look because there, are, there is so much talk today regarding transgenders. And I promised this morning I, I was not going to come this evening, and I'm not, and bash those who choose that lifestyle. I kind of look at it like this. That's between them and God. What I want to focus on is the fact that God made male and female and he did it for a reason. Some of the things we're going to look at tonight, I'm going to promise you, they're just downright funny. Some of you who are sitting, seated with your spouse, you're going to be elbowing. Probably, probably the wife is going to be elbowing the husband more than the other. But we're going to look at the difference between male and female. And we're going to determine the wonderful wisdom of God in the fact that He made men and women differently. Genesis chapter 2, very familiar. Genesis chapter 2, verse 19. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. 
and whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found an help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof, and the rib which the Lord God hath taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked the man and his wife, and we're not ashamed. After God's creative activity in regard to all of the creatures, Eve at this particular time has not been created. There's just Adam. And all of these animals, And God tells Adam, I have a job for you. All of the animals are going to pass by in front of you. God orchestrated this. And you're to name them. Whatever you call them, that will be the name. Why do we call a bear a bear? Because that's what Adam called him. And on and on and on. As these animals came by, and we know there was male and female, as they came by, it dawned on Adam. All of these animals have a mate. But there's only me. Now I'm not suggesting that he complained to God. But it was crossing his mind and God knew it. So he caused a deep sleep to come upon Adam. And he opened up his side and took forth a rib for which he created a woman. Neither man nor woman was superior. But they were different. And they are different because God made them that way. And that's going to be our focus. And I want us to look this evening at some ways in which we see that. And this is where it's going to get a little bit funny. We're talking about the male and the female, the man and the woman. And we'll use certain descriptive terms in regard to both. First, there's the beauty and the beast. The beauty and the beast. Generally speaking, and we'll have to use a lot of generalities in this, generally speaking, men are more physically stronger than the woman. God created Adam with a stronger frame. I mentioned this morning, the morning service about the post I had seen on Facebook where the title of some 
beautiful young collegiate swimmer had been taken from her because a male swimmer decided that he related as a female. And he broke the record. He was stronger. Generally speaking, men are going to be more muscular. They're going to be stronger. Now, there's a very practical reason for that. What was the job that God gave to Adam? Remember? He was to dress and he was to keep the garden, right? Also, in addition to that, he was to be the provider and the protector. So those are just a couple of very, very practical reasons as to why. Then there's the woman. Eve. You know what the name Eve means? It means life giver. Life giver. God made Eve to nurture and to love. And because she was physically weaker than Adam, did not make her inferior in any way. No. So, which is better? Neither is better. Just different. Second, there's the tortoise and the hare. The tortoise and the hare. The man is like the hare in that he has all of this energy. Generally speaking, he has more energy than the woman. These are in generalities. The woman, on the other hand, is more like the tortoise. You remember the story, the race between the tortoise and the hare? The hare takes off and runs, and it is miles ahead, but it stops and rests because it's worn out. On the other hand, the tortoise begins the pace, catches where the hare is, passes the hare, and wins the race. A man normally could win a hundred yard dash. A woman, on the other hand, would win a marathon. It's just the way that we are constructed. The woman generally is going to be so much more durable. The man expounds all this energy, wears himself out. The woman at her own pace, but she lasts. She wins the marathon, which is better. Neither is better. Just different. You get a kick out of this. There's the romantic and the mechanic. The romantic and the mechanic. As I noted earlier, Adam's job was to dress the garden, to keep it. Eve's responsibility was in the home. She was to nurture. She would also birth and raise children. So generally speaking, husbands are not going to be, and I'm watching the arms flying, husbands are not going to be anywhere near as romantic as the wife. I thought it was kind of funny. You can just look at the books men and women read and see that. Men read books on sports or 
how to remodel your garage or how to put an LS in a or a body Chevy, those, those things. Women, on the other hand, they read books on relationships, books on marriage. Which is better? Neither is better. They're just different. And God made them that way. Number four, I call the radar and the computer. The woman is the radar. The man is the computer. Men and women process information differently. I think every single one of us in here that are in a marital relationship would understand that. There's a reason for it. The left hemisphere of the brain deals primarily with logic. The right hemisphere of the brain deals primarily with emotion. Studies show that men use primarily the left side of the brain. It's logical. It's logical. Woman, on the other hand, who's more orientated toward the right hemisphere, operates on emotion. Emotion. And by the way, guys, this is going to hurt a little bit. The truth of the matter is, women do use left brain logic, but they also use right brain emotion. Generally speaking, men don't. So that's why I've said before, ladies, be patient with your husbands. He just has half a brain. Keep that in mind. Always remember that. It's not that he just has half. He just uses half. The right side works like a radar. The left side works like a computer. Women pick up on details. My wife and I will be out somewhere. She'll tell you. Did you notice the color of that? Uh, no. No. She'll ask me some detail about something that we both had just seen. Did you see that? Did you notice that? No. No. And there's a reason for that. We're using different sides of the brain. Men are not into details whatsoever. Guys, you come in of an evening, you've been to work, your wife has been working or doing whatever she does, taking care of the home. She wants to know what your day has been like. On the other hand, if you ask her what her day has been like, she will tell you in great detail everything that happened. The time they got up in the morning until that present time, every detail. The woman asked the husband, he said, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Just another day. Which is better? Better is better. Just different. Then there's the code speaker and the reporter. You know what men use language for primarily? To dispense facts. 
That's basically what it comes down to. The woman, on the other hand, uses language to express emotion. Women share. Men report. The big difference. And again, those of us who are married, we get this. We understand it. And I remind you that these are generalities. There might be some exceptions, but generally speaking, this is the way it is. Because God made us this way. That's why I entitled the message, Celebrate the Difference. Which is better? The code speaker or the reporter? Neither. They're just different. Number five, six, is the lover and the achiever. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33, Paul writes this, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband. God gives some very, very explicit details to both the husband and the wife. And also in that section, there are details for the children as well. But we're focusing tonight on the husband and the wife. God tells the man to love his wife. To love his wife. Now here's where men get in trouble. Deep down inside, we do love our wives. We do things. We go out and work. We take care of things. So we just suppose she knows I love her because I'm going out to work. I'm bringing in a check. I'm taking care of things in the house. She should know that I love her. God tells the wife to reverence and respect her husband. Now let me give you the deepest need of both the wife and the husband. The deepest need of the wife is to be loved and cherished. Now here is what creates a potential problem. We've already talked about the romantic and the mechanic, right? Men, generally speaking, are not going to be as romantic. So to look at our spouse and say, I'm doing all these things, she should know that I love her. You know what your wife wants, men? And I have to preach to myself. Your wife wants you to tell her that you love her. She needs to hear that. I love you. We should not assume that she knows that. She needs to be told. What about the wife? Deepest need of the husband is to be respected, to be revered. And the wife, who is really blessed of God, understands this. And she does everything in her power to build up, to encourage, to say things to him, even though he probably is not telling her anywhere near as much that he loves her as she would like for him to tell her. She obeys the word of God. She says, Honey, I respect you for the man that you are. And what melded her heart when he said to her, Honey, I love you, will melt his heart when she says, Honey, I respect you. You are a man of God, you're a good dad, you're a good husband. Which is better? 
Neither is better. Just different. So you see, God in his incredible wisdom that because man and woman was so different, he made them that way particularly for a reason. Because they would complement each other. The text I read earlier in Genesis chapter 2, I use often at weddings. There's a part in there where it says that the man is to leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. One flesh. And even with all of our differences, when we understand that we're different and that God made us that way, there can be that oneness. That oneness. I told you I was not going to bash. I have my feelings. I'm sure you do as well. I want to be honest with you. This whole transgender issue is just one in a whole lot of things, perverted things that are going on in this nation right now. And it's leading this country into paths that I shudder to think of what awaits America. You look back and see at times when God judged a people. One of the times that he did tremendously, besides the flood, was in the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And sexual perversion was such a big part of that. We have become a society that's more susceptible to being open and new mourns and just accepting the way that God created us. I don't know what awaits this country. I can tell you from my perspective, it doesn't look good. It really doesn't. But we're living here in East Tennessee, and we're pretty much Bible Belt people. So those of you who are married, celebrate the difference in the sexes. Because God made both male and female. So if anyone has a problem with that, I would suggest they take it up with God. Let's stand.